Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Liz Plays Quest 64. This is part three. I do not have a fun beverage check in this evening because I just uh, ate a huge ass Rice Krispie treat and it's making me thirsty. So I just have regular water. Um, it's a it's a tasty dessert that you might not often think about. Um, uh, but whenever I have it, I think about my um, maybe maybe eighth grade English teacher that told us to bring a bag of marshmallows to school um, to take a standardized test as a healthy snack because they contain zero fat, technically. And I remember smugly going home to my mom and be like, guess what, mom? Marshmallows are a healthy snack. And my mom said, no, they aren't. Um, so I think about that sometimes every time I have a uh, have a Rice Krispie treat. Let me get over to the game here. I am in uncharted territory. I have no idea where I'm supposed to be going in this game or what I'm supposed to be doing. So I think that my next course of action is to legitimately go around and talk to some NPCs and see what uh, what is going on. Um, there's only like two places on the map to go, so uh, I think I should be all right. Uh, the ferry boat has broken down, and I seem to be stuck here in this town. It seems that an evil force is casting a spell upon the water and the wind. They call this place Larapool, the water capital. Across from the southern cavern is Normoon, city of wind. One place or the other may hold your fortune. Um, <laughs> so I didn't expect the first NPC for me to talk to to, to narrow me down to two, uh, to two places. So I see here... We have the boat, which is where we came from accidentally. Uh, we're up here in Larapool near Blue Cave. Um, and we have to the south uh, two little houses, a cave called Cole Hazard, a forest called Windward Forest, and a town called Normoon. Um, and I'm guessing we're gonna try to go to Normoon. Can we just talk to this lady? I know you must be hungry after such a long, dangerous journey, but we are short on supplies. I'll give you some mint leaves instead. They'll refresh you. Wonderful. I do need some more bread, though. Would be nice. It's kind of a huge building full of empty rooms. For real, though, why so many empty rooms? Okay, so there's like two exits or entrances. Three exits or entrances. Interesting level design here. <sighs> I did not mean to go in there. This is just like what happened on the boat. I traveled all over when I was young and I heard all kinds of stories, but the scariest was the day of grief. All the provinces of Keltland were fighting for possession of a magic book, but the victorious province fell into ruin in only one day. That day came to be known as the Day of Grief. A powerful magician restored the peace, but his methods are long forgotten. A little bit of lore for us. I'm Layla, the sorceress. My destiny is to protect Larapool, but somehow the wind has stopped blowing. The reason can be found near the city of wind, Normoon. When the wind stops, demons are free to spread throughout the land. I am using all of my powers as water spirit to fight them off. Our world is balanced by four different spirits. If one of them should become stronger or weaker than the others, we are doomed. I have only enough power to protect this single region, Master Brian. You must help protect the rest. Um... I didn't, I really didn't expect all the NPCs I needed to talk to to be in this one building. I think that provided me with, um, 
all the information that I really needed, which is to go to Normoon, I guess. Traversal in this game is, um, could be better. I had to run away from Greenock and leave everyone behind. I wonder what happened to my family. It's very sad. Um, can I get some bread, though? Because I think I'm out of, like, any HP items. have the wings. Hey, I would give you blue wings, but you already have them. Oh, well, yes. It's in. Is there maybe someone that will give me bread over here? The entrance to a cavern known as Blue Cave is located somewhere in this town. It leads to a mysterious, beautiful valley. According to an old saying, if the protecting water is received, the road leading to Crystal Valley will be opened. My grandfather told me about it when I was small. Up until now, no one has found the entrance. These are not treasure chests. as hard as I can. I want to be good enough to sing before the princess and queen someday. The prince and queen someday. Our Margaret is learning to sing. I want her to be the finest singer in all of Kill Ant. I would like some bread, please. We've talked to him before. Well, too bad. We'll have to have marshmallows as our healthy snack out on the road. I think that um, the teacher that told us that was for um, the like Washington State standardized test was the one that we were told to bring marshmallows to. Um, and I am very curious um, if it was like a big drama for every state in the 2000s that like they tried really hard to get there to be like a really challenging standardized test that all the students failed um because that was kind of how i remember it happening in washington state we had the wassail which was the washington assessment of student learning and the i i graduated high school in 2008 and we were supposed to be the like first class that had to pass the wassail to grad like as a graduation requirement and it was like this, it felt, I mean, obviously, you know, thinking back on these things, it's like, oh, it felt like it took weeks to take and, and was really, really hard, but I'm sure it wasn't actually that bad. Um, but it was serious, and like some of the years were dedicated to like taking practice tests to pass the wassail. Um, and it was really controversial because, um, once our graduating class got to it, I, I think something like only 70% or maybe less passed the math portion. And so they had to like get rid of it as a graduation requirement because they couldn't just fail like 30% of the students. Like you can't just not, not graduate your graduating class. Um, and it was like this whole this whole thing, and I don't even think the test exists anymore. Um, so I'm very curious if that was a um, a Washington State special uh, drama that we had, or if that was like a a nationwide um, convergent experience. Just noticing how low my HP is is a little bit of a um, uh, redo of uh, episode one here where I died like four times not paying attention. I think that um, I, 
think that I might be a little bit at a disadvantage missing that forest um, before we took the boat ride. Because if that was just an optional dungeon that I was supposed to like gain levels in, then I'm quite low level to be doing what I'm doing. I will go toward Cole Hazard because I think that's where Normoon is. Unless the forest is also an optional dungeon that I am also missing. I guess I could go down there and see. I'm not feeling like I have a ton of direction in this game. Contemplating my stats and the way that they grow. Um, aside from the spirits. But I don't fully get it. Skeletons. Ah, oh, jeez. guys aren't messing around. That did a lot of damage to me. Um, I accidentally just put a point in water because I was trying to, like, spam heal myself. Um, it is sort of raising the question, though. Let me try my rock attack and see if these are new ones. Um, see if my rock does any good. <laughs> no. No, it does not. Um, I mean, I guess I can cast it from back here. It hits, like, a couple guys as they run away from me. And now I'm out of mana... Um, because I'm feeling really uh, put at a disadvantage that I'm now putting points into rock, whereas it's not, like, progressing my main attack. How much HP did, it, did these things have? Like, obviously I'm doing all my damage with Water Pillar because I have all my points in it. So why would I switch to putting points in Rock to need, what, like almost 20 more levels to reach an equal power in? That doesn't make any sense. So I might just be water mode. And I just kind of wasted like a few points in rock. Unless I'm going to hit some sort of cap, but then why wouldn't I just want to hit the cap? Um, the way that the uh, camera clips through the ground and shows me like the water underneath and stuff just reminds me of the new, um, <laughs> the new gen Pokemon games. I really liked those games a lot. Um, they sure had a lot of that.
This thing can easily kill me by just like backing up and hitting me with this frost attack. Like very easily. Because I can't gain mana from hitting it. And I'm frozen. Yes, I do wish I had gone to that optional dungeon, if that's what it was. Frozen again. This game sucks. Not like this. No! No! Come on! That's not fair. Okay. Maybe I need to grind some levels, is maybe what that means. trying to determine whether I, like, lost anything from that happening. I don't believe that I did. So it's level grind time, I think. Um, I am contemplating looking up the stat growth for the, like, HP defense etc. stats to see if I need to be doing something different. Um, I think these are just like the level 1 enemies which are kind of a waste of time to be in this area. So I still gotta hit him. Hello Earl! Earl just walked by and bumped my mic. Hello! Hello! Earl, hello! I think that um, the noise canceling that my mic does um, means that like his his meow doesn't get picked up, which is too bad. Oh, come here! Can you say something? Huh? Nothing. He's stoic. But we tried. miss so much in this game. Like, so much. Yep, it's level grind time. Uh, so let me think about what else I've got going on um, lately, because I um, have been recording these videos. It's been super fun to do, but every time I record one, I stop and I think, oh good, I have um, another week uh, worth full of exciting life stuff to get through um, to hopefully find something to talk about in my video. Uh, and then nothing happens to me because <laughs> I just like go to work, come home. Uh, it, lately I've been like messing around in Illustrator like most evenings. Um, and then I put my pajamas on and I go and watch some Deep Space Nine in bed and fall asleep. Um, which doesn't, uh, doesn't leave a whole lot of anecdotes for my uh, grinding levels in Quest 64 uh, Let's Play series. 
I can't even rotate my character to face the enemy when I'm frozen like this. Can I hit him with a rock? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did, um, I watched an episode, I'm about to die from this fucking stupid, I got nothing. I can't even turn my character to attack it. Brutal. Um, I did watch an episode of DS9 that I barely remembered. Even though I've watched DS9 like a million times through, I confess that I am sometimes like a skipper. Like I'll skip episodes that I'm not too hot on. So I don't know if this episode is one that I've just skipped in the past and um, and like forgot about or like thought was a bad episode just based on the summary or something. Um, but it's... Uh, I can't remember what it's called, um, but the premise is O'Brien, the engineer character, goes undercover with this like criminal organization, this organized crime syndicate called the Orion Syndicate. Uh, why they had to tap a Starfleet engineer to go on this intelligence mission, um, I think that the show is at the point where it like has dropped all pretense in like just like putting characters in situations like they don't they don't <laughs> they don't even care to really try to explain why so um so brian is is undercover trying to find out how um the orion syndicate got like it like compromised starfleet and that like starfleet information was leaking to this like criminal criminal organization so he's undercover and he um hangs out with this like minor gangster character named Bilby um and uh Bilby is very like charming and the the way that the the episode plays out is the like um Bilby does like a lot of bad things right he's he's a gangster he does like assassinations and they they there's like the scene where um he like a deal goes bad and Bilby has to like kill someone to send a message that nobody crosses him so he's like a you know a morally gray character um Bilby but at the same time he's got a family and he's got a cat that he cares about named Chester um and um like he ends up uh vouching for O'Brien which puts him like in danger if O'Brien fails um but long story short, um, O'Brien was obviously a member of Starfleet and uh, he has like set him up to be killed. Um, and he goes off to uh, be killed on this, this mission and O'Brien tries to stop him. And he's like, I'm, I'm Starfleet intelligence. You, you can't, you can't go. They're just gonna kill you. Um, and then Bilby has to go anyway. Cause he's like, oh, if they find out that um, I was compromised by a member of Starfleet Intelligence, uh, then they'll they'll go after my family. So he, like, goes to his, like, noble death or whatever. And I don't know why um, that episode caught me at, like, a vulnerable moment as I was going to sleep on, like, a Wednesday night or whatever, but I, I shed a couple of tears for Bilby. I couldn't believe it. I was, like, this, like, weird uh, bottle, bottle gangster story... Uh, really got to me. And then I looked it up. I was like, does anybody else other than me care about Bilby? Um, and and found a thread on Reddit of someone else saying, does anyone else care about Bilby? Um, so it isn't just me out there. Just skip my turn. The last thing you want to deal with when you're, like, level grinding in a game like this is when they put, like, the level 1 enemies in with a pack of higher level enemies. I do not want to be wasting attacks on, on these rabbits. A 
Although I guess if dodging the attacks like raises one of my stats, that's probably worth it. Got a potion, which is nice. getting them slowly but surely i think that these like i don't think of them as very threatening but the, like green jump jump guys i don't know what they're called are way more threatening than these um little orca juniors so i think i'm only putting points in water from now on um, I've already forgotten if I've explained myself on this because I'm one of those people that like rehearses everything in their head before they say it out loud, which is maybe everyone. Um, or I have literally already said this and I have no idea, but um, I'm going to do water and I'm wondering if everyone was going crazy when I was putting points in um, earth and kept calling it rock. like the spell is called rock right but I kept saying like I'm putting points in rock but I'm done I'm done putting points in rock it's it's water now have I been up to other than crying at Bilby and DS9. Um, I've gotten really behind in World of Warcraft, unfortunately, and it's one of those, like, it's one of those things where, like, I know I'm not really behind, and I would tell anyone else to go back at any time, but I feel like I'm behind. Like, I'm like, oh, everyone probably knows the dungeons, like, forward and backward by now, and I am the only one in the group that has no idea, like, what's going on, uh, so that makes it hard to go back. Um... I've been playing a little bit of V Rising, which got in the way of my of my World of Warcrafting, um, or rather, that's just like was a chiller um, chiller uh, after work activity than than sweating it out in some some Mythic Plus. But um, that's a that's a chill game. I know it had its moment like um, probably a year ago now. I can't really remember, but, um, it just got its, like, first major update or whatever, so it's, like, fun to do the, like, base building survival stuff. I don't play on a PvP server or anything like that, because as we've covered, PvP hurts my feelings, um, and I just want to make a cool vampire base and, like, go around and fight bosses. Um, that's a pretty fun game. I hate, I hate when I run away from that attack because it does nothing and then I end up frozen away from the enemies and can't attack them. I 
like this game has so many interesting ideas. Like the combat really is so unique and and strange, and the way that the stat growth is like um like separate. Like I wish it did much more tutorializing about that because I don't fully understand it. Um, but it's really cool, and I just um. And sometimes it's also extremely infuriating, like when you have those enemies and you're like in this cool novel combat system, and then they're just throwing ice at you and you're frozen and you have to skip your turn over and over again. And it's just very frustrating, but that's all right. It was, it was 1996, you know? There's something very novel about being in an N60. Oh, I'm about to die! <laughs> about being in an N64 game and feeling like you're a little Mario, but you're running around doing, like, JRPG stuff. So I am kind of a little Mario in this game. Although saying that I'm a little JRPG Mario just makes me want to play Super Mario RPG, my favorite game of all time. Have I made any level progress? Maybe... Maybe I should just go to Cole Hazard and just see how it goes. I feel like it'll go poorly judging by um by these uh Hyrule field enemies. These ones are nasty. I think I underestimate these ones for some reason. Ouch. Taking a risk. Bad risk. Yep. Take a sip of my water here. Okay, so I just looked at my... My experience points. Did they... Look like they went down. I wonder about these, though. I'm gonna look something up. Hang on. Quest 64. Stats. I'm gonna do some learning. How to raise hit points. Use healing spells or healing items. Sleeping in... Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. The maximum hit points. Use staff attacks or get hit in battle to increase maximum HP. Interesting. Magic points. Use spells to increase maximum magic points. Okay. Agility. Have Brian run, dust clouds appear, and get misses in battle. A miss is when the attack connects with Brian. Thunk is sounded, but miss is displayed instead of damage. Yes, I understand. Attack. The amount of damage done with a staff attack. Gain more elements. Okay. I've seen a few posts on the boards about elements affecting stat growth, but the combat FAQ doesn't mention that at all. Has anyone cracked the game code apart to see exactly how it works? Okay, HP, raised by taking damage and staff hits. MP, raised by successfully casting spells, misses, and healing at full HP don't count. Defense, raised by taking damage based on number of hits. Agility, raised by taking steps. Okay, um, so my defense should be really high since I keep taking many, many hits. Um, so 
that's all that's all really interesting. I don't know why the game can't just come out and tell you tell you about that. Also, if my maximum magic power has been increased by using spells, which I've been using a lot of them, and is still only at what, 22? Wow. So when it says HP raised by taking damage and staff hits, does that mean that when I hit them with my staff, it raises my hit point, like HP experience level? Because then I should be staff hitting a lot more. Right? HP experience is at 88%. I'm going to get into a fight and I'm going to do staff hits only and see if it goes up. Very scientific. Also, I feel like if I do staff hits only on these guys, I will extremely die. But we're gonna try anyway. Okay, this is not gonna work. But I did a number of staff hits, so certainly that will um, count for something, right? So I went from 88% to 92%, or maybe 91. Um, also, speaking of that, and how hard it is to read the text in this game, it has come to my attention that um, that's an emulation issue. I really should have known, since I play this game a lot as a kid, that there wasn't like magenta outlined on all of the text, but I, I legitimately was just like, maybe I just don't remember. Or, like my eyes were better as a little kid or I didn't have like an eye for quality like I do now. Um, but no, it's just a straight up emulation issue that puts a pink line on everything, which um, was probably apparent to everyone but me. Um, but it is an interesting thing to note. I'm dead again. <laughs> no. This is what I get for saying this game is for baby children. So, I don't think my HP went down. Uh, dying penalty quest 60. Because if I'm dying a bunch and just taking... Like, hits to my experience points, there's basically no information online. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, 
Okay. I'm going to strike out one more time. And, uh... Hope that I do not die. incentivize me to use my staff attacks though because I think that I I could use more HP no sense to me. I do not understand at all. I'm gonna try to get down to that house by coal hazard. That's my micro goal here. I've been um, knitting again lately, which I have also tweeted about a little bit, um, because I'm extremely frustrated. Um, I've been an English knitter my whole life, which is where you use your right hand to throw the yarn, um, so the yarn that you're working is in your right hand. Um, and in the last like year, or maybe a little bit more, I switched to continental style, which is where you use the left hand to work the yarn. Um, and I like sort of like got it and, and did pretty well with it. Um, but my stitches are way too tight, which makes it hard to like work the other needle into the stitch to begin with. Um, and then you just end up with like a horrible, horrible mess. Um, and so I'm trying to like redo all my muscle memory again to try to knit like looser. So I've been in, like stuck in this cycle of like, I'll start a project, I'll get really frustrated because my stitches are too tight. And then I'll be like, okay, well I have to like reset all my muscle memory. So I'm gonna like knit some dishcloths and then I'll knit some dishcloths and then once those are done I can't go back to my project because I already knit my project too tight so it would be uneven if I went back and then I quit for a few months um, and then the cycle continues but I'm um, currently in the cycle of knitting dishcloths to try to fix my fix my problems uh, stage it's a um Relaxing hobby if you can be relaxed about a hobby. Uh, the miss the misses are are brutal. Please die. Okay, I'm 
I'm at full H. Oh, and I have 100 HP um, from all of my staff attacks. So that's pretty good. Not these guys. Uh, no, thank you. I've never watched the film Frozen. I know um, the song that everybody knows. But I've never actually watched the movie because I, I only just recently started watching movies again. Um, and the last time I was like watching movies was um, in like, you know, 2009. So I have a lot of movies to catch up on, and uh, the Disney animated films are not like super high on my list of uh, of movies to catch up on. This is like the thing that I do because I'll just like fall out of an entire format of media, and, <laughs> and then I'll go back and be like, oh, I I think I'm gonna get back into watching movies, and so I go on all the listicles and are like, okay, what are the best movies that came out in 2018, uh, and I'll ch and I'll check those out. Because I did that same thing with books, where I was like, oh, I kind of fell out of reading, so I better go back and make like a list of all the best books that I missed. These enemies are very annoying. There's nothing more fun in a turn-based um, battle than to skip your turn over and over again. And then, <laughs> and then when you finally get to the enemy, oh my god, I'm not- I'm escaping. That's so... that's so bad. <laughs> Past a cave known as Cole Hazard up ahead, it's straight on to Normoon. It's quite a hike, so rest here till you're ready to leave. Very well. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to like check out the cave and see if I'm gonna just die instantly. I, um, I talked, I think, on the first episode about the kind of um, RPG gamer I am, which is where I overlevel um, myself and then feel like I'm really good at the game um, by beating everything very easily. And this, this playthrough, I've taken the complete opposite uh, philosophy just for the sake of um, like making videos. And it's very freeing to just die <laughs> and not and not really give a shit at all. So I don't know if that's like infuriating to watch, like it probably kind of is, but um, I'm kind of into it. So some Skelebats, these are um, classic, classic uh, JRPG enemies. that um honey bread is pretty nice might we make it to normoon that would be 
be kind of crazy. Some scary music. You're really clipping through the walls on this one. might make it if we just are smart about healing um, in between battles, but um, this, these are also like the only enemies that we've seen so far, so uh, so we shall see. a high density level of enemies though. It's good for my experience points. Hey, I said that we could be smart about um about our uh healing between battles, which doesn't really work when I have no magic power. We're doing okay. Um, something that I did notice uh, during that fight is that I hit it with a level 1 water pillar that appeared to do about as much damage as my level 3 one, and so I'm now um, hitting myself on the forehead wondering if... Um, the level of the water pillar just controls its size, not its damage. Uh, this seems bad. <laughs> I like this guy, though. Okay, we'll try a level one. It doesn't even reach. Okay. Try a level one. 49 damage. Okay. Level three is... Which could be variants. Seven. Okay, so I think it literally is just the size. Um. Ah! Um. Good to be testing theories on the scariest enemy I've ever seen. Doing some deep strategizing here. Kind of in a wide open space now. So I'm not exactly sure where to go. You guys are funny. Blood chill. size of the pillar. That's, um, interesting. I see a spirit. A chest.
healing potion is pretty nice. Like, I, I guess I can use like a level three water pillar to hit it from over here. And I can use a level three water pillar to hit multiple enemies. But if I'm just going toe to toe with one guy, it makes no difference. Maybe. Ah, wow. So I went over to get that spirit, which is all well and good. But now I've completely lost track of where I was going. Uh, so this is way harder when there's only one of these guys because he's not trading off turns with... with those other little nothing enemies. him. Uh-oh. Damn. Alrighty, well, I think that means that there's more leveling to be done, which I may do while not recording a little bit. But we'll see. I might do it while recording. Um, but I think that we made some progress. We found the cave that we need to go to. We uh, gained some spirits. And more importantly, we gained some knowledge about the way the stat growth in this game works. Um, it didn't really alter my behavior at all. Um, uh, but we will... Uh, we will be back next time, either with some more leveling or to uh, spelunk deeper into uh, Cole Hazard. Uh, but uh, for now, thanks for stopping by.